a more realistic nursing shift looks like. And it can all boil down to one word, and it's interruptions. Nursing is a series of interruptions from beginning to end. And it's important to point out that every time a nurse is interrupted in a task, your risk as a patient goes up exponentially, okay? So to say interruptions doesn't do it justice. That means that you could experience a complication because the nurse got interrupted, okay? So you go to get report 7 a.m. from the uh, night nurse, and you're halfway through report, and the charge nurse comes up to you and says, I have to change your assignment because we have to float a nurse. So now you're starting over. So you're already starting out your shift late. You're delayed because now you're starting over 20 minutes wasted, okay? Uh, then you go to the bedside with the nurse uh, because you have to check a dressing, a wound dressing. And you're just simply telling the nurse something medical and the spouse that is at bedside doesn't understand that. And so they ask a million questions or you use a mil uh, medical abbreviation like SOB, shortness of breath, and they think that you're insulting the patient and calling them a son of a, of a B, right? So then you have to de-escalate them and explain that. Time consuming, time consuming, right? Um, then you go out, you finish report, and you go to start your morning medication pass. Uh, and you're in the med room and you're pulling your meds and someone comes in and says, hey, I have a critical lab result for you. The lab is on the phone. You have to take that phone call right then. You, you stop what you're doing in the middle of your medications. You go and get that critical lab result and you have to look up the physician's phone number to call and notify them. You page the doctor. Uh, you go back to what you were doing to getting your medications. Uh, you go in the first patient's room and you're in the middle of, of giving them their medications and uh, it's in a little med cup, right? But they insist on you pouring it in their hand um, and then they drop it. And of course, the one that they dropped was a narcotic, right? So this is a problem because now we have to go in the system and waste a narcotic. And that puts us in a potentially liable situation. Uh, so we have to go back to the med room. We have to get a witness. There's, there's no other nurses around because they're all in rooms at 8 a.m. Um, but you have to pull one out of a room or wait for one to show up and witness you wasting it and pulling another one. So then you go back to what you were doing and while you're in there, after you do the medications, you go to change an, ab an abdominal dressing and you are gloved up and elbows deep in a dressing and the vocera, the little thing that you wear around your neck, starts screaming at you because they're very loud. It's, it's a, a tracking mechanism. And it says, Erica, Dr. Smith is on the phone right now about the critical lab. So now you have to leave a patient with an open wound that you just slap some gauze on top of, take your gloves off, your isolation gown, you wash your hands, you go out, you have that phone call with the doctor um, about the critical lab result. He uh, orders new things for you to do based on that critical lab result. So now you have to maybe enter that order for the doctor because they can't do it at the moment. So again, you're pulled away, you're interrupted. Um, you go back to the patient to finish the uh, wound care and all of a sudden they call a fire drill overhead. So all of the doors go slamming shut right? And you, again, you have to stop what you're doing because we have different assigned roles during a drill or something called overhead, right? So again, this poor patient is left with their, their dressing undone, okay? Uh, we get through the fire drill. We finish the dressing. We go on. We're at our third patient. We haven't even seen patient number four, five, or six yet, and it's already like 9 a.m., okay? And you're in the third patient's room, and the charge nurse comes in and says, uh, you have an admission, and you say, no, I can't. There's no way. I'm already drowning. And she says, that's too bad. They're already here. They're in bed 103. And you have to smile through that, okay? Um, so now you have to go and see the patient, be, the admission, because they're the priority. They're probably the most unstable patient. So patient four, five, and six, you still haven't laid eye, eyes on them, okay? And they're, ang and they're angry. And they're angry, and they're on their call, like, constantly. Where is my nurse? Where are my meds? Where, you know, all of this. I need apple juice. I need a pillow. I need mm -hmm. a blanket. 
Yep. And then the unit secretary is calling you. So and so in 305 needs a blanket and ice chips. Yep. And yep. Yep. All day. So then you're in with the new admission and you're going through the lengthy health history and all of that. And then there's a code called overhead, code blue, and it's your patient's room. And it's patient number four that you haven't laid eyes on yet. And guess who that's going to fall on? That's going to fall on the nurse because you could have potentially caught that two hours ago had you had time to go see. So now you have to stop in the middle of your admission, leave that patient and the family member that has a list of demands for you um, and go do a code. And that code takes 45 minutes and you're sweating because you're doing compressions and, it, and it's terrible. And in the middle of that, um, a spouse from one of your other rooms is literally standing in the doorway with an empty water pitcher saying, I need ice while you're actively doing compressions. And they're serious and they think that you're the worst nurse in the world because you haven't gotten them ice chips yet. Um, so you get through that. Now it's 3.30 in the afternoon, okay? And you're finally going to go to the bathroom for the first time. And you're finally going to go try to shove some food into your mouth for the first time. You haven't eaten yet today, okay? You can feel your blood sugar starting to drop. You go in, you sit down, you're shoving um, a sandwich or some crackers in your mouth. And uh, the dietician comes in the room and says, hey, I need to talk to you about patient so-and-so. Well, I, I'm at lunch. It's my lunch break. Can it wait? No, they're going to interrupt you nonetheless. Uh, then you go back to eating, and then some of the unit secretary comes in and says, Dr. So-and-so is, is on the phone. He has um, some stat labs for you to do. So your lunch is over. Forget about it. You had three bites. Um, you go back to work, okay? You're trying to look at the new orders, and now the case manager is on the phone because they don't want to come into the hospital to lay eyes on the patient, they want you to stop what you're doing and give them an update on the patient, right? Uh, so that's frustrating. They're a nurse. They should know better, but they don't. Then you have a call light in your, your fifth patient's room, and you go in there, and they're pissed because they have been waiting on you for so long, and they don't know how to express that appropriately. So they take the urinal that's full of urine, and they throw it at your head, and it spills all over you. I'm not exaggerating. These things happen on a daily basis, a daily basis. Uh, so then you, um, you go get some scrubs from surgery and you change and you're nasty for the rest of the day. Um, you feel like you need to decontaminate. Well, don't forget, then they, they want to do a debriefing about your code. Oh, right? yes. A debriefing about the code. About why the code happened and then they want to know why didn't you get in the room to see your patient? Yes. Before that, that doesn't make any sense. We could right. have caught this earlier. Why weren't you there, Erica? Yeah. Yep. Right? So then you go back about your day and it's um, five o'clock and it's getting near the end of your shift and you should be trying to wrap things up with your last med pass and getting ready to give report, but you get a call light and you go in the patient's room and um, the family member is irate because they now have access to the patient's medical record on, in real time online. And they looked it up and they don't understand that the radiology report includes possible differential diagnoses. This doesn't mean the patient has cancer. It just says a possible diagnosis could be, but they're panicked and they don't know how to express that. So what do they do? They get up in your face and they push the nurse up against the wall and they say, you better watch yourself when you leave tonight in the parking lot. So now you go to report that to security and you fill out the appropriate workplace violence forms. And then your manager calls you in the middle of something else and says, I need you to come to my office right now. And you go in there and she says, what could you have done differently to prevent that visitor from threatening you. And by the time night shift gets there, you're two and a half hours behind. You haven't charted a thing all day because you've been interrupted from the second you got there. So you get through report. It's maybe 7.30, 7.45. But guess what? You don't get to go home after being there for 12 and a half hours. You're going to be there another two hours to chart everything that happened 14 hours ago that you haven't had time to do. That is an average.